This is my new ride. It's a 1963. A bit hard to uh, to pronounce in any meaningful way in English, but it says Trig Trig. It's the same as the Tempo. Um, they were sold under various names here, Trig Svitun, and some other ones. But it's a Tempo. It's a Corvette 290, three speeds with a uh, hand shifter. And that's quite the contraption. So you have gears up here on your left hand with a clutch, or the same with a clutch. So you pull in the clutch, and then you are allowed to, to change the gears. And hopefully it will go into A gear and not just neutral. And then it locks when you release the clutch. Quite a thing. This lever here I think is for the decompression valve. I don't have one on this bike. So I don't know what happened. Maybe the stock shifter broke and they put something else on there. Quite possibly. And according to the speedometer it does 80 kilometers an hour. Now if you were to try that on, with this death trap of a front end you would be insane because this thing got the head shakes pretty bad and it's hard to say why but I think it has to do something with this whole contraption it doesn't really scream road racing or anything and there are some bushings in here. I hope they are worn out because that means I can make new ones and make it better. But probably that's not the problem. It's probably just the whole shebang and the shocks. I really don't want to change them because they are probably what came stuck with the bike. And uh, it's kind of cool, but. If I have to, I have to. Yeah, and it has a go fast bit on the front fender. Look at that. Pretty neat. And it has another cool feature. It has a, a hidden room. It's not really hidden, but it's a smuggler's room or I don't know. Can take this lid off and inside there is the stock toolkit and air pump and and a spring and <laughs> the spring isn't really for anything it was hooked on the clutch arm when I got it and on my first or second test ride I took it off because I didn't understand why it was there in the first place uh, but I carried it with me in case I would find out. But there were another problem here and that is this. The crank has a bit of play in it <laughs> up and down and that's not very good. So I have start to started to take things off here. And that's what this will be all about. It's rebuilding this little motor. There is a Sox 50MLKX, it's a 3-speed, but it's not a little 3-speed with the pedals and stuff. It's more like the 4-speed, because it has the wide crank case and the 17mm uh, the crank. And uh, But it has the small cylinder, so confusing times, and I am no Sox expert. I've just been reading to my eyes, almost popped out on the internet to find that out. So we have, uh, <laughs> we have something to do here. And that's a, that's a little cool thing. Look at this. This bike has no choke, but it has a tipper. And that 
piece right here. Uh, this guy here, you pull that down and that moves this little arm here, which in return pushes on this guy, which pushes on the float. So it pushes the float down to keep the fuel flowing into and through the carb. Pretty trick system. And I need to change that fuel line. That's horrible. It leaks and it... Mm. And when I got it, I, I got this bike just a few days ago. But when I got it, it, uh, it was flooding really bad. And the float was, uh, was uh, punctured. And it had a hole in it. And not a hole, but a crack. But it's made out of, uh, of brass, I think. So I soldered it. And it is now um, not hold anymore, <laughs> so it floats. And that's something you don't see every day. Product of Norway. It should say made in Norway, but well, I guess it's not really made in Norway. Well, it's made in Norway. The the frame and the fork etc is made here or was made here but the motor is made by Sox in Germany and the tank was made by another German company and all the grips and stuff it's Magura Magura handles and if I can turn the camera upside down you might be able to read that maybe if my GoPro would pick that up which it probably ain't gonna do but anyways, it's Magura. The speedometer is a video. And the seat is what's it called? Denfeld. Made in Western Germany. So they kind of sourced stuff from pretty much Germany. And made their own frames. And I believe wheel hubs and rims probably and fenders and assembled it so the main brand was Tempo and then they were assembled at the various places in the country to my understanding I've just been reading about this to my understanding they were sold assembled and sold by a couple of different uh, retailers around the country and they had their own brand names but it was the same parts the same bikes the same models so that's an interesting uh, business concept but enough talk we need to get this little guy out and taken apart so i can verify some of the parts in here so i can order them so we can rebuild this thing. And this is nothing like a Japanese motor. Now I've been used to Japanese motors since for forever. And I've been through a lot of motorcycle motors and moped motors and dirt bike motors and cars. but And they all have sort of the same, uh, you know, the same mindset behind them. This here, totally different. Not totally different, but uh, you ain't gonna find any shifting forks in here, to put it that way. Shift forks is the word, not shifting forks. Ooh, and one more thing. Look at this. That's a good half a meter from the, from the, the, the foot peg to the brake pedal. You know, you, by the time you lift your foot from the peg and place it on the uh, on on the brake, you're dead. There's another funny thing here. You have road signs on the tank, so when you see something on the side of the road, and you can look down here, and then you crash, and then you can look down again and see that it was your fault. Yeah, that might work. Maybe.
no, that didn't work. Oh. Try again. Just bending that. No, it comes. Nice. I think your position pretty horrible. But. I wonder how much crap is in his exhaust. Probably never been cleaned. It's full of oil, I'm pretty sure. Or what used to be oil. Yeah, a gasket or a shim or what? Something. Okay. And everything has strange dimensions on this thing. There is metric, there is inches, there is 11 millimeter, 9 millimeter, all the strange stuff you never use. And some 3 eighths I think I found here somewhere. Man, why? Does this chain have a link? That would have been neat. There it is. Uh -huh. I probably misspoke a bit there. Of course it has links. It has a bunch of links. But this one here that kind of... What do you call them? The missing link? <laughs> no. That guy. I'm not gonna lose this. Here we go. I think this has been off a couple of times. There. I like putting stuff on because then I don't lose it. If I try to be smart and put it in a box or something, I'm gonna lose the whole box. So now it is the fuel line and the throttle cable, and I think it's loose. Let's just take the whole slide out. Easy, calm and easy, no rush, no rush. I think I need to move the camera. And it's probably piss poor lighting here, but. Here we go. It looks so sad now. It's a horrible sight. A little motorbike without a motor. Terrible. Now the first order of business here is to get the sprocket off and get the flywheel off. Probably empty it out for oil but I need to make a flywheel puller to take this out because my 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 other puller or the one I have doesn't fit, and it's easy enough to make one as long as you have the tools. I also need to get that nut off. Should probably drain it for oil first, but is there anything that we can kind of hook? In here, yeah, I can 